My name is Seng Wan Choi from the University of Michigan, and I'll be talking about system evaluation of neural navigation guided transcranial histotripsy system designed for cadavers. So transcranial histotripsy has shown great promise by treating a wide range of locations without overhitting the skull, and is being investigated for numerous indications such as tumor, ICH, and neurological disorders. Transcranial hyphal guidance is often accomplished by MRI guidance, but MRI guidance, as you already know, is clinically burdensome and expensive. <laughs> neural navigation, on the other hand, has been the hallmark guidance tool for neurosurgery for the past three decades. Uh, in neurosurgery optical tracking, uh, retroreflective spheres, RRSs, are attached to the patient's uh, head reference frame and surgical instruments to able to track uh, patient's head and surgical instruments at the same time. So the goal of this study is to demonstrate the feasibility and accuracy of neural navigation guided transcranial system designed for cadavers. So this is an overview of the workflow where we upload the pre-operation CT and MRI and our uh, transistor tracking instrument geometry file into, which is equipped with retro retroactive spheres into Medtronic Stealth Station. And we go through the coordination steps where there's the user interface and then our optical positioning system that is tracking the reference frame, which is attached to the patient. And then we get the tracking one across the patient's head surface uh, and then create surface matching uh, point cloud to match the CT uh, to the reference frame. <laughs> Here's another experimental snapshot where we have the patient attached to the reference frame and the patient is held up by a stereotactic frame. And here's our transducer tracking instrument, which is attached to the HGT transducer. We use 360 elements, 700 kilohertz hemispherical array for this experiment. And here's a preliminary cadaver data where we target a corpus callosum system and thalamus, and we produce a relatively large error. So here's an example MRI of the pretreatment. Uh, where we're targeting the corpus callosum here at the green crosshair indication transducer focus. And then post treatment MRI, we evaluated the center of ablation and then we determined the targeting accuracy uh, <clears throat> afterwards. So after getting the large targeting error, we went back and thought about the components of the experiment where there is a registration largely divided into registration step and treatment uh, and transducer step. Uh, so after the investigation for sources of error, we identified that transducer tracking instrument is, uh, which is part of the registration, is part of a large source of error. <clears throat> so we went ahead and analyzed it and designed a new TTI, where in the previous one, the, the retroreflective sphere placements were arbitrary, while on the new one, uh, we co-align the spheres with the focus, so they're all in the same plane, and that was the largest change in addition to increase, one increase in the number of sphere. After designing the TTI, we set out to evaluate the whole co-registration accuracy step, and we 3D printed this focus structure, which has a central structure that is pointing to the focus of the transducer, and we see it with the skull that we obtained from anatomical donation program. And so how we got the neural navigation system to register the skull and the focal structure, and then we attached it to the transducer and we exported it to Cranion, and then we exported it to Slicer to evaluate the co-registration error where uh, here are the elements on the outskirt ring, and then here's the skull and the focus structure. And if you zoom in here, here's our focus structure, geometrical focus, and then here's our neural navigation focus. So the distance discrepancy, we deemed it as the gradient error. I repeated many of this process to produce the gradient error. So with the old TTI, we were producing 8.3 millimeter, while with the new TTI, uh, we were producing a total of 1.89 millimeter for two different skulls. So after a registration step follows treatment. So, and the treatment includes two-step aberration correction, uh, which comprise of CT aberration-based correction, which is cranion, and then uh, cavitation-based aberration correction. And we use 
registration information from your navigation to generate cavitation clouds and observe the accuracy of targeting relative to the geometric performance. So we created this new acrylic grid plate, uh, this three by three grid, 0.75 millimeter uh, inch spacing for translation and XY. And then we had a separate acrylic spacer for half an inch translation to see. And this plate is able to do 25.7 degrees of one axis rotation clock and counterclockwise. And so therefore we tested out 36 total location for this part of the evaluation. So this is the evaluation setup where we have the camera, two camera, and then uh, we generate a Hitchcock bubble cloud at 27 different locations, which are just five millimeters uh, space apart. So these two orthogonally placed camera were used to extract XYZ information. And we used the uh, images without the skull, which is the free field, as the ground truth and subtracted the bubble locations uh, we observed in the skull. So this is the uh, absolute uh, transducer slash treatment error that we observed. Uh, and the Z direction error was the largest. So this was the first neural navigation guide transcoding of CGC platform done for cadavers. We will achieve 0.19 millimeter registration, 0.3 millimeter transducer accuracy. Uh, and then we are working to further improve the registration accuracy, further with more skulls and then um, and more rigid TTI, and maybe a new water coupling setup that will allow closer playing with some of the TTI to transducer will also help alleviate the error that we're observing. And the limitation of the study is that um, because of the cadaver availability, we haven't tested out this uh, new setup on cadavers and that the soft tissue is excluded. Uh, thank you everyone for your time. And I would like to acknowledge everyone in the lab as well as funding sources and I'll take any questions from here. Thank you.